Matt here with yet another fishing video. So today I'm out here on Lakota Ray. Pretty nice day, overcast skies, sun setting. It's about 8 o'clock at night. And yesterday when I was out here I caught a muskie. Unfortunately I didn't have my GoPro camera with me, but I did have my um, little Kodak, um, whatever it is, some easy sheer potato I bought on eBay. I was able to get some vid video footage of them, so let's check that out. This is him. <laughs> see, as you can see, he's 36 inches long. Uh, really nice guy. Wow. See any golden tags on him? Really great fish. I'm going to get him back in the water. Yeah, quite a nice one. He uh, was about 36 inches. I didn't get a weight on him. I caught him around this general area. I'm not going to give you guys uh, too many details as to where I caught him for obvious reasons. And again, I forgot to bring my GoPro camera, so how stupid of me. But what I thought I'd do is show you um, what I did. So this was exactly the exact equipment I was using down to the lure. This is an old St. Croix. Dates back to the Malazoic era. Bought it at a garage sale. Some quantum iron reel that came with it. Bought it for eight bucks at a garage sale. This was the lure I was using. It was a um, Anatail Tackle Company Undertaker. So yeah, it's a walk the dog surface lure. Now with walk the dog lures, you want a short, stiff rod in order to get that zigzag action. I don't know if you can see that in the water. After every retrieve, you want to do a nice wide figure eight. What that allows is for the fish, there's a follow up to follow you up. Now, I was casting in this general direction more towards the lake. I'm hoping I could get a maybe even another one just to prove that I did in fact catch them. Again, I am using all original equipment. I haven't actually taken this lure off since I've caught them. Again, similar weather conditions, overcast skies. It thundered earlier, it thundered earlier today too. Wind was actually blowing more this way towards me. Because we're going to run into shore, I'm going to go ahead and move.
Okay, so went ahead and moved across the mouth here. Now, like just about any fish, it's a good idea to have two rods ready with the top two lures you might use. Of course, it wasn't a very epic cast, but I wanted to make it to show you what I do with a figure eight. Now, with musky, they tend to be a little persnickety. They they tend to follow the lure right to the boat and then do a U-turn and go back deep. So, the idea with a figure eight is in the last two feet, you want to make that nice, big, figure eight pattern here. Again, what you're allowing is you're allowing your lure to be in the water longer, so as to hopefully get a strike. And no such luck. I'm going to let it sink for a while. Yeah, this is, I, know, I think this is anywhere between 14 to 20 foot in this general area. I think I caught him, and I caught him back where I was, which is about 100 foot that way. And I was using a top lure, not necessarily an appropriate lure for for deep, uh, deep water fishing. Now one thing you can do with a figure eight is if you're fishing with a buddy, you can kind of coordinate between casting and figure eighting so as at least one of you has a lure in the water at one time. Now I haven't caught a muskie in years and that last time I caught one I think was, I don't know, five years ago. Of course I don't fish as often as I would prefer so of course then again when I was fishing three times a week that, that wasn't enough. What I'm going to do is I'm going to try something. Go ahead and try a suic here. I don't have it with me, but I have one that I attached a um, small beetle spin spoon to the back end of. And I used to kill the fish with that one until I lost it. Oh, I had something there. Got a slight hit. I think it was a smaller northern, though. Nothing to get excited about, though. Still a fish. Now, because I had a hit, I'm going to go ahead and try to vary the action a little. And no such luck. If you're ever dealing with a follow-up, a good idea to do, or a fish that hit, is to try to make it, try to change the action a little. What that does is that allows the fish to believe that he hit the bait and then crippled it. Got this brand spanking new Mojo Muskie with a Revo Toro winch. Paid 300 bucks for it versus this one that's caught me a muskie, which cost me eight bucks at a garage sale. Kind of funny when you think about it. The top waters, it's a good idea to pause them once in a while. What that allows, and that again, all lords are trying to simulate a dying fish. If you ever see a crippled minnow swimming, what he does is he swims and then he kind of pauses, swims, pauses. So when fishing with plugs and jerk baits, it's a good idea to try to replicate that as 
best as possible. This might be the last run I make because it looks like the sun's just about gone. Oh yeah, here's one. It's a little northern. Yep, but it's still a fish. Yep, I wish it were a lot bigger and it was ski, but whatever, I'll take them. Catching a fish to me is like a gift. You can take it or leave it. Yeah, when I do catch a muskie on fishing lures, I have a tradition where I save the lure. And believe it or not, this lure is due for retirement today, so... After this round, I'm going to retire this lure and add it to my collection. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. I really wish I could have caught another muskie today to at least get it on film. But, um, or better film, I should say. But I am glad that I at least got to go out, show you what I did, and kind of give you an idea of how to fish for muskie. Um, so I guess until, until next time, don't forget to click like, don't forget to subscribe, and don't forget to favorite. And if you didn't like it, feel free to dislike and comment accordingly. And well, until next time, I am Matt Gearloff, signing off. I hope to see you out there.